Item Number SCP-3349 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Individuals affected by SCP-3349 are to be admitted indefinitely as inpatients under routine care in Foundation long-term acute care facilities so as not to re-expose SCP-3349 to civilian physicians and the medical community at large. Reports of instances are to be intercepted by field agents, who are to use experiential discretion regarding the use of Class A amnestics. The cardiac activity of patients admitted with SCP-3349 is to be monitored at all times by a centralized telemetry unit, continuously staffed with two 12-hour shift clerical personnel. Instances of SCP-3349 are to be reported by the clerical staff to the nursing staff promptly via an exclusive telephone line. Electrical manifestations of SCP-3349 are to be captured when possible, the printouts cataloged both in the patient's analog and electronic record. Beginning in 1941, SCP-3349 has been actively expunged from the civilian medical community and literature initially per endeavors of Mobile Task Force Gamma-5 Red Herrings, and since continued by the ongoing global acquisition and obscuration of case studies by the DEA. SCP-3349 is a non-fatal cardiac arrhythmia that has a 42.8% incidence following a specific sequence of intravenous drug administrations. 150 mg IV drip of amiodarone, infused over 15 minutes. 1 gram, <clears throat> 1 gram IV infusion of magnesium, infused over 1 hour. 1 ampule of sodium bicarbonate, infused over 3 to 4 minutes. 0 0.1 microgram IV of epinephrine, immediate push. SCP-3349 is not constant, and appears periodically in the affected individual with an average of 9 occurrences per day, lasting for an average of 3 minutes per occurrence. Objectively, SCP-3349 produces a fluttering central and peripheral pulse upon palpation, often described as tactilely similar to a purr of Felis catus, the common house cat, and can be auscultated with a stethoscope. The clinical descriptions also cite the purr of Felis catus. Charleston M.E., Pompeo, B., Alessa, K.L., and Mackenzie D.W., 1972. SCP-3349, A Multicenter Longitudinal Cohort Study, 1942, Foundation Quarterly Journal of Medicine, 45 in parentheses, 233-253. On electrocardiogram, SCP-3349's manifestations display commonalities with the waveforms of human vocalizations. Spectrographically reconstructed audio signals based on SCP-3349's electrical signatures produce various intonations of human-like laughter, wailing, and speech. See audio data below. Approximated via analysis and resynthesis sound spectrograph. Auditory outputs resembling the purr of Felis Catus has also been reported. SCP-3349 is non-curable, and is refractory to defibrillation at 200, 300, and 360 joules. There are no known precipitating or alleviating factors regarding SCP-3349, other than the aforementioned induction. Despite the erratic electrical activity, patients remain stable, though few may experience some reduction in exercise tolerance. Audio Data A Classic Presentation of SCP-3349 A brief instantiation has been selected for educational purposes. File AAR.3349.A10302 Auscultation with Digital Stethoscope Post Amplification 0 through 11.1 seconds Normal sinus rhythm with increasing tachycardia 11.1 through 24.2 seconds SCP-3349 24.2 to 30 seconds Spontaneous return to normal sinus rhythm File AARWDC.3349.21323 Spectrographic Resynthesis from Leeds 1, Version 5 Figure 1 An example of a reverse-engineered waveform from spectrographic data, top. Taken from an SCP-3349 electrical signature, bottom. Mary
Medical record number Obtained August 25, 1955 0314 Some interpreters detect a vocalization resembling human laughter. File AARWDC.3349.F163 Spectrographic resentences from Leeds 2, 3, Version 1, Version 2, AVF William Medical record number Obtained June 12, 1947, 2332 Some interpreters detect multilayered human and or canine-like wailing. A low-tone variant of the frequently encountered Bellus Catus purr can be heard. 25.54 seconds through 31.17 seconds. 40.54 seconds through 49.32 seconds. File PHS.3349.23 PO2.1.2.3 Example Manifestations of Recorded Speech Janice Medical Record Number April 28, 1996, 1651 Patient supine, resting comfortably in no acute distress. No events overnight. Identified are a man speaking Arabic and an attempt at a telephone conversation. Michael B Medical Record Number B January 10, 1960 1334 Patient sitting and conversing normally, discussing current events. A male voice is identified. Clerical transcriptions and voice recognition software have interpreted the input as possibly being one of the following phrases. Help me. Hell believe. Hell. Please. Help, please. Richard Medical Record Number January 10, 1961 1334 Patient sleeping during time of capture. A female voice is identified saying the following phrase. Firefighters, emergency personnel responding to toxic spills, researchers, or specialists cleaning up contaminated facilities with breathing apparatus. The phrase is found in now defunct Foundation protocols, current at the time of recording, regarding hazardous occupational spills. Addenda Addendum 3349.01 In 1957, then Chief of Cardiology Dr. Robert Wolk II tested the conversational ability of SCP-3349 under the assumption it was sentient. Below is a surviving transcript of the test. Transcription Type provided by certified stenographer appointed by the Foundation. June 6, 1957, 827. West Wing, Room 439. Subject, Macy. Present are Dr. Robert Wolk, Dr. W. Kathy Williams, Registered Nurse, C. Beverly McIntosh, Registered Nurse, B. Susan Bolero, Typist. Patient is lying supine in four point restraints. EKG leads attached. Dr. W. Bev, can we get in the. the. uh. B. The amio is pulled. Just going to put it in the saline, Doctor. Dr. W. Okay, good. B. What are you going to say, Doctor? Dr. W. Don't know, Bev. C. EKG is ready. Dr. W. Let's begin. This is Macy. 32 year old white female. Past medical history of hysteria and celiac disease. No known drug allergies or surgical history. The medications indicated in the procedure notes are prepared and we are accessing by a left external juggler central catheter. Medical number is… All in agreement? All, yes. 836. Dr. Woad successfully induces the arrhythmia. Dr. W. Alright. Can we pull the machine over closer? I can't see it. C. Is that it? There? Dr. W. I don't know, Kathy. I need to see. Alright, keep the blood pressure cuff cycling. 837. Dr. Woat and his staff initiate messages. Hello. Greetings. What is your name? Coded in Morrison delivered by 1. Playing the auditory sequence near the ear of the patient. 2. Manual percussion of the sternum. And 3. Electrical impulses via transvenous pacing. The doctor places his stethoscope on the patient's chest. Dr. W. Can you hear me? Doctor moves his stethoscope to various points. 
Registered nurses continue repeating the messages in Morse code. Dr. W. We would like to speak with you, if that is alright. You can trust me. Can you tell me who you are? Do you have a name? EKG machine beeping. No change. The rhythm is evident of printouts. No response from the patient or the team. Dr. W. I say, this is a doctor. I am attempting to speak with you. If you can hear me, then let us know somehow. No indication of a reply. The doctor takes his stethoscope off after several minutes of searching and listening. Dr. W. This is as ridiculous as a seance. Turn all that off. Registered nurses comply, and the test is aborted. Addendum 3349.02 Over sixty years after the above session, junior researcher Mark Regimir, since promoted, recovered the actual EKG printouts, previously presumed lost, and submitted them the novel methods to approximate the captured signatures of spectrograms. Below are the outputs when set to logarithmic scales. Spectrogram 3349.DW.01 Spectrogram 3349.DW.02 Cross-reference with Foundation data suggests, with a 95% confidence interval, that the youth depicted in the above spectrograms to be the deceased daughter of Dr. Wode, who was lost to a pedestrian versus automobile collision at the untimely age of six. Additional attempts at communication with SCP-3349 are currently being authorized.